Hello farmers and welcome back to the hills of Tuscany. Just a few more grape vines to go and the grape harvest will be over for year number three. We can move on to the month of October where we got a good amount of work to do. So yeah, the grapes are doing pretty good. We got another full harvester off the other set of vines where the worker was in. And so far off of this set, I got one full harvester plus what we have here and with the three ro more rows to go. But yes, we got we got to move on to the month of October. No more work to do really in September, uh, but a whole bunch to do in October. Uh, the main things will be the sheep will need to be fed. The sugar beet and cotton harvest should be ready to go and get those productions back up and running. Need to replant some wheat to name a few things. And of course, uh, hopefully sell some products. Probably the raisins from here. Oh yeah, and there was a comment asking about pomace and are there any productions for pomace? Yes, there is. I thought we I think we talked about it. Uh, but the big BGA that's worth one million, or I gotta buy it for one million, I could bring pomace down there to be converted into the usual electricity methane digestate. Uh, but spending a million dollars to buy the BGA to make a couple extra grand on pomace, not really worth it. Uh, there is also a compost fertilizing facility on the premises. I don't know how much it is, but I don't think it's e even that is going to be worth. Because we're not, we're not making that much pomace from the grapes to begin with. So in order to get my money back on it after buying a factory, probably not worth it. So we'll just sell it as is. This harvester seems to be getting slower, even though yeah, it doesn't have that much damage on it. Um, actually, it says no damage. The realistic damage mod, of course, is what we're, we are running. Could be just the hills. All right, and the last set of vines. And then I'll struggle next spring when I go to sell all of the juice. The white grape juice and the red grape juice loading them up because uh, that's a lot of pallets to sell. I do feel like for some reason that I got more grapes this year than I did the previous year. I mean, it should be the same because we're not running precision farming on this map. So in theory, it should be the same yield. Alright, back up the hill here. We'll go drop this off and we're going to call it a day. Slash month. So we are sitting at 35000 so we should have more than enough in the bank to cover our loan interest overnight. I kind of hope it's... I don't know if it's a windy day or not. It's hard to tell. But we do have a wind turbine down at the big BGA, so the more wind we get in a day, the more money we should earn from that. At least that's the way it seems. All right, in you go. And there we go. We should have a whole bunch of red grape juice and white grape juice in a couple of months. I think it's springtime when we sell that. But the raisins should be next month. So if we come over here, we should be able to see how much we got in there, right? Uh, grapes, we got just shy of 18,000, and we got 5,392 liters of white grapes currently in, and we can see these jugs are starting to spawn. Actually, I'm going to start placing them over here. I don't know if we run out of storage space for them or not. We'll start placing those over here. Those will be good. All right, let's get on back home. And good thing is we can just teleport in this game just like that. Um, yeah, we should be good to go. The sheep are getting kind of low on the hay, but they should be good until morning. So, let's see. We're at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, sitting at 35,000. We'll sleep until 8 o'clock because it's October. Getting up earlier than that, it's going to be just dark outside. We're probably going to drop down to like eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars $19,000. I hear rain. We don't want rain first thing in the morning. 20000 So, not too bad. Not too bad. Where was that money going, you may be asking? Well, we do have a $9.6 million loan currently looming over our head. Um... 
so yeah, we should have, let the game update here. Uh, yeah, so Sugar Bee is ready, which is priority number one, along with the Cotton is ready also. Uh, like I said, we got to replant the Wheat in field number seven. That needs to be taken care of. Uh, the Grape Vines, are they ready to be pruned? Not that I want to come right over here and prune them right away. And no, they're not ready to be pruned yet. The leaves uh, are still nice and green. We got to wait for them to turn. So, nothing to do on the grapes. Oh, yeah, while we're over here, let me go back over to the production building. I mean, I could just come into here and check on, make sure we got enough space for everything. Uh, where are we here for the grape production? Uh, yep, yeah, wait for that whole reset here. There we go. Yeah, we got plenty of storage space for everything. Uh, we're almost through the white grapes. Uh, raisins, yeah, we're not really having that much for raisins. But we should be able to sell those today, I hope. Uh, where are we with the raisins? Yes, raisins. The price is starting to drop. It needs to go to the farmer's market. I forgot where the farmer's market is. Uh, farmer's market. This is our market stall. That's a 0km. Where's the farmer's market? I, br I brought it to the farmer. Yes, down here. All right, so this is where the great, uh, sorry, the raisins need to go. And what else do we have to sell today? That's looking pretty good. Uh, the raisins we know. Uh, potato chips always seems, oh, the potato chips need to go to the farmer's market as well. Along with like the carrot soup needs to go there. So we got some money sitting around, which is not too bad. But let's go ahead and get right into harvesting this morning. Um, you know what? I feel like the cotton is not going to take us long to get to and take care of. Especially with this harvester. We'll zip on down the road and get that up and going. Yeah, 8 o'clock in the morning. You can see it's still kind of gloomy out. But is this going to get brighter as the day goes on? Forecast is looking all right for us currently. So we are hoping that through the winter we bring in enough money where we can buy more of the fields over here, combine those together, and have a bigger cotton field. And of course now we got a whole bunch of traffic over here. And now that I learned I can uh, pick up these cotton bales with a telehandler. We should get about a bale and a half. Is it a bale and a half off this field? All right, we got some cotton going on in. Yep, that's where we, last spring when we were planting out the cotton field, we had the mulcher on the drill as well. And then I found out that's not the best way to go about that approach. Because it leaves little spots like that. Yeah, with this cotton harvester, not going to take us too long to get this field taken care of. So here on the hills of Tuscany, we're going to keep the fields pretty much the same. So the cotton field is always going to be the cotton field. Uh, potato field is always going to be a potato field, so on and so forth. Until we can figure out the ratios correctly for our production buildings. Which uh, we are getting pretty much down to a T at this point. Yeah, I have been, uh, I really would like to buy this field right here. And it does come with all the trees over there. So in some sense, if I bought that field and got into some forestry work, some logging... We could sell the trees and get a lot of our money back for the field that we're paying for and open up more land and just have more cotton as well. Uh, but that field is, I don't want to say it's expensive, but for our money situation, it is. I think it's like 150000 for that property right there. I think I'll stick to my current plan of merging the other fields on the other side of the road. And once we get those done, then maybe we'll look at buying the land to our left with all the trees on it here. And possibly put a different crop into it. We shall see how it goes. 
Because I need about another $200,000 to buy all that land on the other side of the road to merge it together. But at the same time, I should be paying off some of that loan, which we have here and there. The good news is we really don't need to be buying any more machinery or anything like that. We pretty much bought everything right from the get-go. So it's basically just buying land and repaying the loan as we go. Of course, this machine right here, if it wasn't for this series, I would not be running this John Deere cotton harvester because this costs like, nine, what was it, $950,000 for this cotton harvester? Extreme price for machinery. I'll never get my money back on this harvester, just be, even though we're making fabric into clothing. I think the year before we made like, what, $40,000 on clothing? So not, not a whole lot to get our million dollars back on the whole making clothing production. Would take years. Of course, if we get more cotton and then uh, we'll be making more fabric and more clothing per year. But currently, yeah, it would take us forever to get our money back on this. But as we know, this series is trying out new things and just showing off some things. Using machinery and harvesting crops that we normally would not use. But I mean, it does have double the working width, which is nice. Alright, so sooner rather than later, I hope we get our first bale. And we'll bring all the cotton back to the fabric production building with the telehandler. I don't know if I can pick up both bales. We should have two bales when we get done. Don't know if I'll be able to pick up both. But maybe we'll give it a try. It doesn't hurt to try. And the first bale is almost set to be made. I probably should have it on automatic drop, not that it matters. And there's the first bale. And I want to say we had about, what, 10,000 liters after that, but that seems like quite a bit. No, if I have 10,000 liters, that's a, that'd be a full bale. That doesn't make no sense. Uh, so what was it? 5,000 liters? Was it half a bale? Could be, because we are near 2,000 liters right now. Either way, it's all going to the spinnery to make fabric, and then of course in the clothing. And just a reminder, our spinnery takes the wool from the sheep and the cotton here, combine them together, and we make more fabric that way rather than just making cotton in the fabric and wool in the fabric. All right, one more pass, we'll do it. And unfortunately, the cotton harvest will be done already. But when May rolls around, we'll see the benefits from the cotton. Yeah, I thought we brought about four or five pallets of clothing down, which on hard economy will bring you in about $10,000 per pallet. But at least this time since I got the, uh, where we can unload the bales, as long as it's more than 10% in a baler, uh, we can uh, fold up the combine and put that away. And also get the cotton out of it. That's always helpful. And next year when I go to replant in this field, I may not plow the field. We don't really need to plow a cotton field. I just did it and have done it in the past because same thing with sorghum. Uh, farmers have told me, real farmers have said, yeah, she would cultivate the field to knock down the stocks because a direct drill, it would it would still drill, but you would get like a lot of stocks, old stocks left over. So it's always best to cultivate the field, knock them on down. 
We don't really need to plow the field. Ah, and here comes the hill, hills of Tuscany shadow from the mountain. We got a big mountain over there that blocks the sun later in the season, like we're in in October. So it may seem like it's getting dark out because it is. Even though it's only 8.30 in the morning, it should be getting brighter. Alright, so there is the cotton harvest done. We will drop off the other bale. Does it drop off what's in the baler and not in the in the front? I don't remember. Or is it going to take it all? Let's find out here shortly. I think if I hit O, it will unload. All right, so it's going to unload that, but not the 2,000 liters that are still in the harvester but it will fold up which means i can bring it back to production lane and drop it back into the shed so let's go do that let's grab the telly handler and see if we can grab both bales and bring them over to the spinnery i uh, should have the beacons on here because i am taking up the whole road like always and put it in the way of the shed. Now, we'll have to bring down the crate so I can inspect this and repair this. But I was noticing, if we look, like, right there, I think that's the cotton that builds up in here before it gets, be, gets to... Uh, yeah, before it gets to be made into part of a bale. So that's our 1,000 some odd liters that are still in there. Can't get that out, but that's the way it is. All right, let's run over, grab the telly handler, and bring it on up. So we can start making some clothing. Do I got wool in there is the question. I probably do. Uh, where are we here? Um, actually, I got wool and cotton in there already. Um, let's go ahead and we'll just activate that. We want to do the batch fabric mixed materials. So let's go ahead and activate that. And we will turn on the clothing as well. So that way as the fabric's being made, we can start making clothing. Ooh, uh, where did I leave my telly handler? Oh, is that, that's up at the, oh yeah, because I was bringing manure. Uh, speaking of manure, kind of forgot all about this. Uh, let's dump that into the BGA. Is it going to empty out the trailer? Of course not. All right, we'll just leave it there. Uh, telly handler should be right up here. Yeah, I thought I was going to be able to grab the rest of manure out of here. Yeah, the cows are just producing more manure than what the small BGA can handle. But not much we can do about that. Alright, I'll meet you down at the cotton field with the pallet forks on here and see if we can pick up two bales at once. Alright. Let's see if we can uh, space this out correctly. So yeah, last time I was always trying to stick it into the other side but now as I found out no you want to stick it through the foil twelve thousand seven hundred and thirty liters of cotton and the telly handler seems to be doing okay with it although I can uh I can feel a little bit that there's a lot of weight on the front, which makes sense, and not so much on the back. But the rear wheels are still on the ground, but you can see the front wheels are suffering a little bit. Next year, this will all be clothing. Oh no, don't, don't, no. Okay, we got room to get by. We're all set.
Now, of course, when we get more cotton next year, that's the goal. Maybe we'll have to use the auto-loading trailer to go down and pick them up, but I think that trailer only picks up two bales as well. Alright, that should be the pickup area, and they'll, they should slowly disappear. Well, they'll disappear all at once, but they should be taken. Uh... Do I got it in the wrong? I always mix this up, which one to drop off and which one's the pickup point. Is it here then? Is it here? It's here. It's there. All right, there we go. That's better. All right, we can turn that off. All right, we're, we're good to go on that front. All right, the next main thing we need to get done is getting the sugar beet. At least uh, some into the production building. So I gotta lower that down. Drive up to it. Okay, it was there for a second. There it is. There we go. Oh, I did put the sugar beet one on, right? This should be for potatoes. And yeah, that's the potatoes. That was the sugar beet add on that we put on. Maybe I should throw some lights on. So depending on how much sugar beet we get, uh, at first we're just gonna put in the sugar beet into the sugar production building as is. But if we start getting a, a good amount, then we might look into leasing the trailer where I can cut the sugar beet up. And that way we'll produce sugar twice as fast. At least, at least I think we should. It makes sense that we should. But we need to get that candy production going. So the more candy we have when June and July rolls around, that's going to be key for us. And next year this field will be a little bit bigger because the field just to our left which had canola into it this past year is going to be combined with this one so much more sugar beet will be made this is looking good already already 25,000 liters into the harvester This was all done because, well, last year I tried buying the olive groves. And we were going to delete the olives to put the sugar beet there. But we're unable to delete the olives that are in that field. So, yeah, we moved on over to this section right here. doesn't seem like this was a big field, but now that I'm harvesting it, it is going to take me a moment. Looks like I have a little bit of crop destruction there from driving over it. Don't remember doing that there, but... Oh, yes, I do. I apologize. Uh, I went around the corner, and one of the trailers clipped one of the olive bushes, which bumped my tractor into the sugar beet. So, one headland, which we are going to be about in just a moment, it's going to be somewhere around 60,000 liters. Yeah, it should be 60,000 liters and then some. I probably should set this off on a worker so I can get other work done. But for at least uh, in this episode, we're just going to get one full harvester load 
and get that into the sugar production and we'll move on to something else. I just want to get these sugar up and going. I don't have to harvest the whole field in one go. So holding 250,000 liters, that means I should get five trips easily around this field before we are nice and full. Red and on a sunny day in late July and everything turned upside down. I almost lost track of time as weeks went by. I couldn't get him off my mind. I told him I want that great love. Like standing in the middle of a bonfire. You don't know how you got there, but you hold tight. Knowing that you can't get burned. Just tell me how we lost track of everything but each other. I honestly don't know. And tell me how we messed up. Drifting away from each other. Didn't want to let you go. Carry on on your own Ever since I got a good look in his eyes I just knew that he was special He said he wanted to take it slow But I couldn't help that I wanted to take it to the next level Cause I wanted that great love Like standing in the middle of Well, it looks like four Helens will be enough To get us a full harvester should be pretty close to a full harvester anyways. We'll have to drop off the header to get over into the sugar factory. And we'll be unloading directly from the harvester itself. Good news is a little bit <laughs> is that the sun has peaked around the mountain. So we are getting a good amount of light. So I think I turned off the lights. Yeah, I'm guessing we might get, uh, I think we'll get another full combine of sugar beet. Okay, let's go ahead and drop off the header itself. Now I just got to remember, I think the auger, or sorry, the, the belt has to be unfolded out. And dropped all the way down in order for me to get in there. Let's wait for this car to get on through. Or is it unfold once I get in there? I think it might be unfold once I get in there. Or, no, unfold before I get in there. Uh, lower that down. And kind of hug this side. And there we go. Sugar beet is, well, it's going in. It's all that matters. It is going in. All right, let's get to that production building and get that activated. Let's see here. Sugar beet. Let's go ahead and activate that. And then, of course, that sugar is going to be brought right over. So we can go ahead and activate that. Uh, activate that. Activate the honey, sugar, and strawberry uh candy as well of course everything's going to say deactivated because there's no sugar over here but that'll get over here sooner rather than later and all the other productions if you're wondering that has to be done with sugar cane uh sugar which uh we do not have uh yeah we're not doing sugar cane on this map so anyways let's see that's up and running that's all still going that is all good yes everything is still going the greenhouses no surprise there they're out of material and yeah so we're all set let me back this up fold the belt back on in zip on down the road and we'll reattach the header and we'll get set to harvest some more sugar beet next time Too close. There we go. 
All right, we'll leave that right there for now. Let's go ahead and grab the Lamborghini, which is at the BGA. Um, I will try to put more manure in, but it's not going to take that much. Yeah. All right, we're going to drop off that trailer right there. And now we're going to grab the forage wagon because I need to take care of the sheep. And I want to do that now before I forget about it. The sheep are going to be rather low on food. And they need some hay. Now, I was looking at, before I started recording, to make sure I could zip through the end of September, end of October, I was checking on the animals themselves. Uh, okay, that's not how you get out of a shed. All right. Just move over there a little bit. There we go. As one does. So, I thought the grass field, when I cut it next month, I was going to make all hay. But I think we're going to make it all into silage again. Because looking at the stats of the animals, if we oh, we're already on sheep. Um, yeah, they only require a certain, uh, right now, about 65,000 liters of hay per year. And if we go to our production building for hay, uh, we have 108,000. So we got more hay in stock than, I mean, we can make it to next spring easily. So by just keep on making more silage, that way we can make more TMR, making sure the cows have the feed that they need is more important to me. Now before I grab the hay, oh, I keep forgetting, I got grass in here still. All right, so I'll drop off, drop off the grass first that's in here into the fermenting silo. And then we're going to grab the silage that's in there and bring that over to the TMR building. And then we'll swing back this way and grab the hay for the sheep and go feed the sheep. And I was trying to... Does anyone remember? Not that it matters because i got to figure it out right now. I'm trying to remember how much... 30,000, maybe 30,000 liters that they, they'll take so I don't have no place to restore hay so if I grab too much it's got to stay in the forge wagon till later on which is not that big of a deal I don't think all right this will take a moment to fill and a nice full load of silage let's put our beacons on Now the combine I need to put away. We're done with that. Uh, we got some clothing out already, which is nice. All right, we got to come into this gate right here. And somewhere like right about here. I think this production building is always on. Uh, yeah, we got plenty. So, oh yeah, we're building up with TMR. So almost, almost full of TMR, which is good. Uh, the cows, wait, did the cows reproduce yet? Looks like they have. Yes, we got some calves running around, which is good. Um, do we just have one bowl? No, we, we got a couple of bowls now. Age 10 months. Are they really 10 months old? Eight months. All right. Well, eventually we got to sell. We got to let them grow up a little bit. Then probably uh, sell them when they're a good price. We don't need all those bulls hanging around. All right. So we're making some more TMR. I'll probably take some out of there and feed the cows later on this month. But they are not a uh, priority. As you probably saw, the sheep were rather low on the hay. And with the enhanced animal mod, if they're out of food for too long, well, we know what happens. I'm just going to grab 30,000 liters of hay. And we'll go up there and make the sheep happy. While we're there, we'll also look to see how much wool they have in their storage. 
Now I have mentioned about getting a small trailer to auto load the wool that's in the sheep pen. The small trailer over at the greenhouses that I was using to put seed and fertilizer in the greenhouses, I can convert that over to a flatbed and we can auto load from that. So I don't really need to buy another trailer. I'm not really gonna, I'm probably not gonna use that trailer for anything else, so I might bring that over here to grab at least the pallets out of the sheep pen here. Rather than try to use a tail handler all the time. Uh, what do we got? Yeah, not a, not a whole lot here. Now, all I need to do is just back up the forage wagon to the entryway. And the trigger should come up. Okay. Doesn't help if you hit the door, though. There we go. That's all we need to do, and hopefully they take it all. Uh, there it goes. I'm like, please don't clip out of the trigger. And they didn't take it all, so it must be only... What is that capacity? 25. All right. Well, all right, the good news is, in some sense... Wait, are the cows fine with TMR? Yeah, the cows are fine for for a little while. And, of course, the, uh, the sheep are going to be fine for a little bit. So I guess I'll leave that there. And hopefully by November, they'll take the rest. Wait, how much are they eating per month? It's going to take a couple months. <laughs> it's going to take a couple months. Uh, we don't have a full pen yet either. we got to be pretty close, though. Um, yeah, we're, we're getting pretty close. And we may do the same thing as we did on other series, that once the sheep get nice and mature, uh, like when they're worth a 1000 bucks, they should be worth like a 1000 when they're fully mature, which I don't see any near that amount. Hmm. I think it was Goldcrest Valley we're getting $1,000 per, uh, per mature sheep. Uh, but currently these sheep are not anywhere near worth that much, so we'll, we'll look into it further on down the line. So right now both my trailers are are being used, one with manure, one with hay. I'm just going to come back over here. Just so that, at least with the Lamborghini on the trailer, it will remind me, like, oh yeah, like, if I want to use the Lamborghini, I'll, I'll, I may teleport back here and go, oh yeah, I kind of forgot that this, this was here. Because I kind of forgot at the beginning of the month that this was here. Alright, so, yeah, that BGA is still processing that. So, and now we know the animals are all set for a while. Uh, the cotton field is done. The sugar beet harvest is underway. Uh, so we got we got to finish up the sugar beet harvest this month. We got to get the wheat planted. That should be... Is this the last month I can plant wheat or is this the first month I can plant wheat? Uh, on this map, we can plant wheat all the way through December. So that's good. Um, yeah, we're not making... We're only getting, doing the wheat just to get the straw basically for bedding. and But we are taking the grain down to the grain mill. Uh, we do need to uh, sell some products, some of the raisins. Uh, the price is slowly dropping. So we may start with that at the beginning, beginning of next episode uh, to bring some money in. And I'm not sure. When the money comes in, I either may purchase the land to make sure we have it. Or we may nibble away at that loan just a little bit more. I'm probably going to lean towards getting the land first to make sure we have that. Because that's, you know, that's going to benefit us in the long run faster than... Saving us a couple hundred dollars on loan interest every month when we uh, hit the bed. But anyways, that is where we're going to wrap it up for today, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching as always. And I'll catch you again right here in the hills of Tuscany. But until then, have a good one. going to bring this combine up and get it set to get washed.